Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to ask you a question. Are you stuck using a .NET version like .NET Framework 3.5 or 4. Point whatever or even UWP and you want to use the latest and greatest that C Sharp has to offer like records, the required keyword, the init keyword and so so many more features, even nullable reference types but you just can't because they're not supported? Well in this video I'm going to show you how you can use latest C Sharp with your old .NET Framework versions. I'm going to explain how those features were basically added in the compiler, why they don't work and how to make them work. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make you subscribe, ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsis.com. Now, before I move on, just a quick reminder that I'm still running my two-day in-person workshop from Zero to Hero Effective Testing in C Sharp in a few conferences this year, as you can see. It is a two-day in-person workshop where I take you from the basics of unit testing into some more advanced stuff than integration testing and more advanced stuff there and then finishing it all off with some performance testing. So if you want to spend a couple of days with me mastering those skills then speak with your manager and see if you can make the trip and NDC has been kind enough to actually give me a ticket to give away for free to any of you so check that link in the description to see how you can sign up to that giveaway. All right so let me show what I have here. I have a couple of projects one of them is .NET Framework 3.5 and I'm just going to quickly show you that over here and the latest supported version you can use is 7.3 so not even 8 and i also have another one donor framework 4.7.2 which again is a c sharp 7.3 version that's as far as you can go officially now as you can see and i'm going to use the 3.5 version as you can see i can just use a drop down here and change the version to any version i want because i can use that compiler to compile that c sharp so I'm going to use C Sharp 11 here and just say, OK, now straight away, nothing really breaks. In fact, I can just delete everything here and I can say console dot write line. Hello from dot net framework 3.5. And if I do that and I run that project, then as you can see, it is printing. It is using top level statements straight away. You can use a higher version of the Roslyn compiler with your old .NET Framework versions. However, this does not mean that everything will work. For example, if I go back and I revert my change and I go over here and I say create a class called user and in here when I have a property, I'm going to call that full name but the moment i go here and i say okay i want to use the init keyword here then the compiler kicks in and it says well i don't know what you mean because i'm missing a predefined type well interesting this is a type called is external init in the namespace system.runtime.compiler serves hmm so i'm thinking from my perspective what if i go here and i say namespace and I try to create the type. So what if I say system.runtime.compiler services, which I can do, and I create a public static class called is external in it, just an empty one. Then immediately that error goes away and I can compile my code. Now this feature is added. I can go here and I can say var user equals new user. And I'm just going to say full name is Nick Chapsis. And if I go down here and say user dot full name equals John, then I properly have the compiler error saying that, hey, you cannot do that because you say this is init only. Why are you trying to set something that is init only? And now the feature is supported. I can compile this and this will work. Let me just quickly show you. So we're going to say user dot full name, run this. And as you can see, it works. And this is because of how features are implemented in the compiler. Basically, most features, except for the virtual static abstract members in C Sharp 11, are not CLR changes, meaning they don't have any fundamental changes on the runtime. They're purely compiler changes. But the problem is these types, for example, the is external init type, which is used as a marker when you use something like the init keyword, is not present in those old Dodder framework versions. So what you can do is you can fill in those blank spaces and then the compiler will know how to add those features and then you have support like 
NLAB reference types, required keyword, init keyword. Even if I want to have the required keyword here, I can do this and Rider gets a bit confused. It thinks it's here, but the moment I try to uh, compile this, you can see that it says I'm missing two attributes, the required member attribute and the compiler feature required attribute. Now, there's many ways to actually find the code for those attributes. One of the easiest ways for me is to use source dot 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 net. Yes, it is a dumb name, but OK. And what I can do is I can just check the type name. So in this case, we have the compiler feature required attribute and the required member attribute. So if I say required member attribute, then I can find that file over here. I can literally just copy this and then I can paste that in that namespace as well. And if I try to compile now, then I only have one error, the compiler feature required attribute. So I'm going to go ahead and add that as well. As you can see, it is here. I'm going to just copy it. This one is a bit bigger and I'm just going to paste that on the bottom. You don't have to have everything in this file, by the way. I'm just doing it to demonstrate how the compiler thinks about building your code. And then I'm going to run this. And now I have required keyword support. So if I go ahead and I don't provide the value, as you can see, compiler kicks in. Hey, there's a required member. What are you doing? I need this and it just won't compile, as you can see. So even in a version like Dota Framework 3.5, you can go and retroactively add those features. Now, here's the thing. This approach works, but it can get a bit tedious trying to figure out all the types you need for all the different features. So my recommendation is actually to use a NuGet package called Polyshop. Polyshop is a NuGet package made by Sergio Pedri, and it's a package that is able to identify which polyfills you need, which of those types are missing, and generate them for you. It is an amazing project, and I highly recommend you check that link in the description and you start the project on GitHub, because the more attention it gets, the more support it can get for other frameworks as well. So please give it a star. So what I'll do is I'm going to go to the 4.7.2 version over here and it can work on the 3.5 version as well. But with 4.7.2, we're going to get better support. So I'm going to increase that to C sharp 11 over here and I'm going to go ahead and add Polyshop in NuGet. That's the package. So I'm going to quickly add that and then I'm going to go to the program.cs and I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before. So I'm going to create a class that uses the required keyword and the init keyword. So I'm going to say class user and I'm going to make a property string full name and then two things required and also init straight away. No questions asked. I'm restoring packages. I'm building. It just works and it works because Polyshop comes in and as you can see here with its source generators and it generates all the needed types for my project. For example, required members attribute. It built that is external in it. It built that anything else we had, for example, compiler feature a required attribute, it added that. So you have them here and you can use those features even if they're not officially supported. You can go as far as you want. You want to enable NLAB reference types? You can. Do you want to have a record? For example, have a record, um, well, let's say user. So just comment this out and say user over here and say string full name. Well, you can do that. You can go ahead and just use it via user equals new user. Nick, and it just works. It is awesome and it uses the fact that the compiler has implemented those features on a very surface level. It doesn't really touch the runtime and you can just give those missing types to the compiler and can use them as long as they're in the right namespaces with the right properties in them. I highly recommend you give this a go, especially if you're someone who wants to use the latest and greatest. You keep up with C Sharp, but you just can't use it because you're stuck in a legacy project that just can't use those features. This can be a glimmer of hope if you want to sharpen those skills. So I highly recommend again, you give it a start on GitHub. Thanks so much to Sergio for this initiative. And I really want to see this project flourish and support more things as it goes. But what do you think? Have you tried to solve this problem in your own way? And were you aware of something like Polyshop? Have you used another package? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreon for making videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this and the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.